did you get to this point? Somebody continues on this journey till they diagnose you of hepatitis. Where do you think you can get the faith to rebook the hepatitis? Somebody starts taking drugs or so and so, so thing, and then wakes up with liver or kidney issue. You have done three abortion, your womb is now gone. You now marry and start praying. How did you get to this point? You have entered the hands of spiritual wickedness in high places. Now listen to me. There are some of you here under the sound of my voice. You are playing the games of the devil. Let me interpret a spiritual mystery to you. The fact that nothing is going wrong with you now, whether or not maybe you are living a wrong life, you are just living your life as though you don't have an enemy, is because you don't understand that there is destruction waiting for you. When you study the beings we are fighting in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 12, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in high places. That means when a principality finishes his work in your life, he hands over to a power. A power, when done, hands over to a spiritual wickedness or rulers of darkness in high places, magistrates. The people who finish it, who finish the job that princes started, are spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I want to say this to somebody. God has been stirring your heart towards repentance. There is an iniquity in your soul you have journeyed into and it's already recalibrating you. And you may think that because nothing is happening now, nothing will happen. See, you need to understand that the Lord is plentiful in mercy. God has long suffering. But the challenge is this, and this is where my fear is. You see, any secret sin you fail to address will disgrace you publicly. And so, there are some kinds of people when they are caught short, you may see them in church and you say, ah, that brother has been committed. But what you don't know is that that brother has been a customer of a particular iniquity. And now he came to a junction whereby spiritual wickedness in high places took over. You, you need to understand that you can never be a friend to the one who wants to devour you. Your challenge is this. You are naming the name of the Lord, some of us. As we name the name of the Lord, we are sitting in iniquity. Not knowing that when you name the name of the Lord, what you are telling Satan is that I am your enemy. And he's looking for how he would devour you. If you don't change, there is destruction at the end of the tunnel. There are spiritual wickedness in high places. Don't help the devil destroy you. Somebody continues on this journey and God forbid, you have done three abortion, your womb is now gone. You now marry and start praying. How did you get to this point? Somebody continues on this journey till they diagnose you of hepatitis. Where do you think you can get the faith to rebook the hepatitis? Somebody starts taking drugs or so and so, so thing, and then wakes up with liver or kidney issue. You have entered the hands of spiritual wickedness in high places. How did you get there? It was a series of engagement of a lifestyle that was wrong. There is an enemy that wants to devour you, in case you don't know. In case you are living your life just anyhow, he says, stay alert. Be watchful. You have an enemy seeking to eat your life up. He's not, that, he's not happy that you are on earth. Have you not read about the prayer of Jesus for his disciples and for us in John 17, 15? Let's read it together. There is an enemy wanting to eat up your life. So life is not a fun fair. Life truly is a warfare. People are out there to eat you up for free. So don't play to their advantage. Don't play their cards. There is an enemy wanting to take you up the scene. Look at what Jesus prayed. I am not praying that you should take them out of the world. You will not go before your time. Now, this is Jesus praying for us. Don't take them out of the world. I pray that you should keep them from the evil one. He goes around looking for people to eat. And Jesus is saying, please, don't carry them out of the world quickly. Keep them from the evil one. God will keep you from the evil one.